While location scouting abandoned buildings, I quickly realized that besides dirt and dust and rubble and broken glass and assorted rubbish, there wasn't much variety in the way of sound producing objects. These type of locations were a haven for Foley recording, but if you're looking for something more specific, it's wise to bring along some portable props and sound exciters. Since you'll want to more than likely travel as lightly as possible, take along some small sound exciters, such as drumsticks, jazz rakes, chopsticks, a violin bow, and about anything else portable that will help you coax sound out of the objects and spaces that you encounter. These were extremely useful tools, especially when recording the old piano that we found left abandoned in the old ballroom. We used them to scrape, hit, scratch, and pluck sound from this antique, forgotten, detuned instrument. Also at the Bauhaus, Stefan and I stumbled upon some old cans of spray paint that were left behind from some graffiti artists down in the basement kitchen. Using the drumsticks, we recorded various single hits of each of the cans and metal fixtures. Each instance provided us with a unique timbre. The recording process was easily done by striking each of the objects one at a time. I made sure to leave space in between each iteration and allowed the sound to die out completely before I recorded the next. In another huge ballroom, we found a gigantic mass of beams built to support the collapsing ceiling. This was a remarkable occasion for a rhythm-driven jam session. At the Stasi bunker, besides the rooms, hallways, and the fixtures, doors, and other building-type sounds, there was also very little available in terms of sound-producing devices. Fortunately for us, we have a spare storeroom with a plethora of leftover goods. We had a pre-recording meetup to select some objects we thought might be useful to record. I really wanted to focus on simple, everyday items that everyone might have access to. This is some of the footage of us rummaging around, listening, and making selections. When selecting sonic props, remember to select with your ears and not just with your eyes. Think about how to excite sound from a single object in many different ways. Shake it, roll it, strike it, and pay attention to how even holding it can make a difference to the tonal quality. Try grasping the object in various locations and holding it in different ways. Another suggestion is to listen how the object sounds interacting with other objects. How might a canister sound rolled along a broken guitar fretboard? What does a bowed piece of metal sound like? How about jazz rakes on a flexing saw?